Hey everybody, this is Luke. And I'm Kurt. And welcome back to The Breakdown. I personally am very happy to be back with you all. I personally, 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 <laughs> you're I'm personable happy. and you are very personal. Thank you. And oh. I'm personally happy to have you back. We had a great time. I had a great time with Jamal last oh, week. It was, it was wonderful listening to you guys. I was driving down to Virginia, got to listen to that. That's it's so fun awesome. getting to receive uh, from the breakdown myself. That's so awesome. I, I'm going to tell a truth here. Um, you're far better at that than I am. Um, I don't have enough Chronos time in my day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have the same. But, no, don't don't take me. You there. have kids. Yeah, so. it's very difficult for my me. My time to... is very much my own. Oh, dude, it's it's difficult for me to tune in when I'm not here. Yeah. So, but I appreciate. I always appreciate the feedback when you're like, "Hey, this is really good," and and Jamal loved being mm. here. He and I had a great time yeah. volleying and going back and forth, which is what he said to me. It was a great volley, and that's always good, you right? Know? And and you know, th- just as a reminder to all of you guys listening, the breakdown really is just a model of what we all as believers should be doing with the messages on Sunday. That's it. Because it's not just a a nice speech that the pastor that's or right. or whoever speaking brings to us it's they pray on it and they seek the lord on it and the lord has this message for us as a body so and we're not supposed to just leave it in the sanctuary on sunday morning that's right we're supposed to talk about it that's what that's what um the old testament families yes. were trying to do like talk about this with your children yep. talk about it as you walk along the way yep so as you go about your life that's it deuteronomy 6 is where you know moses is giving that rehearsal review these things with your children and this is really good luke i mean this was your heart behind Really coming up with this breakdown idea that there would be an opportunity, number one, for people to hear from other voices, but also, two, to practice dialogue. Yes. And I would say for most of us, what happens is we get these amazing messages on Sunday, and some just have the practice of saying, hey, that was a great word, it was a great Mm -hmm. worship, and I move on with my life. But really, the expectation is, and this brings us now to Greenhouse, the expectation Mm. is that we're doing life with one another, um, even if it's j- just right there within your own house or your own community on your street or a couple of streets around you. But you're actually talking about, wait, what does this word mean? Like, let's just take Sunday, for example. Right. Touch not the Lord's anointed. Like, how does this practically play out in my life, especially right. when I'm suffering like David? Absolutely. And that's what we're going to talk Absolutely. about a little bit today. Yeah. But the fact that we're practicing that dialogue, Luke, mm-hmm. you know, because there's no way in an hour and 45 minutes that... Pastor Zach or whoever's teaching mm-hmm. can get to how this actually pr- practically applies to your life today. No, and no, this week. No, not at all. And you know, I was driving back from Virginia on Sunday, so I listened to to church in the car. Yeah. Um, and I got the message in the car, but then I listened to it again uh, today, and you pick up different things when you listen to something over again. Yeah. Um. And it's really important that, you know, you meditate on what sticks out to you. That's right. Um, otherwise, it's, it just goes in one year, one ear and out the other. Yeah. And that's not what we're taught to do. It's you want to be doers of the word. Yeah, that's so good. So um, real quick, uh, you know, another shameless plug, as is our new phrase here, or my new phrase. It's not something I have regularly used, but greenhouse. Mm. I, I have to say I was talking with some people in the past 24 hours. Honestly, Luke, even going out and taking my dog out, like I, I, I feel really blessed. Um, I live in the same apartment complex as some of my greenhouse members. I know, that's so funny. It's really oh, that cool. Is so funny. I'm really excited. It's awesome. And and I live down the street from some others, and I live just five minutes from some others. This is something, and here's this is a great point. This is something that I've longed for, but even living in that proximity with these people, I have not made time mm. to get together, and my heart is longing for fellowship and connection for both my wife and I and for our family. So I am elated to say the least. I'm elated about Greenhouse. I'm really excited that I'm going to have an opportunity really to block out a night in my week and say, wow, we're going to do life together. Right. You know, right. like right. I, we all need that. So I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to Oh, me to this. too. Yeah. Me too. And that launches this Sunday. This is what's exciting, man. Yes. I know. It's so like, oh. everyone listening, be prepared. Yeah. Come in Sunday with the expectation that you will join a greenhouse. Yes. 
Yes. You might have to make a few extra steps than you normally would on Sunday. I know. So prepare for that. And it's really cool. I mean, Pastor Zach was mentioning, or I forget if Ashley, somebody said that they have this nice board that was put together and you can see all the greenhouses yeah. in Southern New England. Absolutely. Really cool. Hey, this is bringing me back to your experience in Virginia. Yes. Before we even yeah, get we to- about this. Yeah, yes. Before we even get to Pastor Zach's I wanted to message, jump on can that. you bring everybody yeah, in? Yeah. So I, I attended uh, my friend's church down in Virginia. Um, and the pastor was talking about uh, the vision that their church has for the year. Yeah. Um, they have a very unique church. It's it's called Maps Global. They have a very big heart for the Middle East. Mm. Um, and they they were birthed out of a prayer room. So the the so prayer and the presence of the Lord is what they really emphasize. And it was really cool. Uh, as he's sharing his vision, it echoed a lot of our core values. You can wow. identify all the core values that our church has. Uh, you could identify all the fivefold giftings, even though they don't they don't go at it with that exact name. Wow! But it was really encouraging for me because the Lord was showing me how, like, when we when we pursue Him, He brings us into a place of health. Yeah, and, and that's His desire for each church is to come into the place of health. Yeah, and it starts by being changed in His presence. Yes. Um, and the pastor made one statement that I was like, <laughs> he has no idea that I'm sitting here, but wow. this is totally totally for me and totally for us as a church here at his Providence, as we go into this greenhouse season, he said um, something to the effect that he desires their church to be like a greenhouse. Wow. And he said, the point of a greenhouse is to grow up plants that are too big for the greenhouse. Mm. And that's our desire that's here desire. as well, yeah. because this is where we're going to call out the giftings that the Lord has given each of us. This is where we're going to um, cooperate with the growth going on in each other's lives, where we're going to receive from others, where others are going to catch our blind spots. Yeah. And we're going to grow up into that full stature of the body of Christ. Yep. And then the Lord has other work for us to do. That's he has it. even bigger fields for us to do to to work in. He has more wells for us to draw water from. Mm, that's so good. Now I'll tell you what, not only is that greenhouse piece speaking to me, but you know what else speaks to me um, as somebody who is right here in Southern New England, and uh, we know that God is speaking to our church, but it's affirmation when you hear that God, through his Holy Spirit, is speaking to another church, something mm -hmm. that is so similar. So, so it similar. shows that yes. the Spirit of God mm -hmm. is moving us as a body of Christ. We, we tend to be fragmented, right, in mm -hmm. our thinking, and we think, oh, we're HPC and we're the body. We are one part Correct. of, of God's yes. whole body, yes. Jesus' whole body yes. throughout the world. Right. We right. are brothers and sisters around the mm -hmm. world. Yes. And so it's really cool to hear several hundred miles away down in Virginia oh, yeah. Yeah. that the Holy Spirit is leading another church and another pastor very similarly. Yes, absolutely. It's encouraging. Because it's healthy. And, yeah. and that's what I think is really important as we as we grow as a body this year, as yeah. a church this year, yes. is to understand that these like our spiritual values, our our core values, our our um, you know, the, the emphasis on the, on the fivefold, it's not just, they're not just gimmicks. Mm -mm. They're not just um, nice words and phrases. I These are that. drawn from scripture and yeah. they're drawn, uh, we're led by the Holy Spirit into health. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it, another church that's also healthy, you're going to see all of those same elements. They so might good. not use those same words, yep. but you can identify that. We can identify health. We cannot, we can identify non-health. Mm, that's really good. I was so glad that you shared that with me, um, and then we shared it here because it was really encouraging. And I think that Pastor Zach's message uh, is a perfect setup for where we're moving in Greenhouse. You think about this past Sunday, and you know, last year you and I talked a lot about how the Lord would be having one seamless theme in the messages, no matter who's preaching, and mm -hmm. just really looking at the growth. And we're starting another year very much the same way, where you yes. can see that the Holy Spirit is leaning into something. We've talked about the body. We've talked about a bunch of different things. And now we're at the place where it's like honor. If you were to sum yes. up Pastor Zach's message mm -hmm. from this past Sunday in one word, it would really be honor. And Yeah, because I would say the antidote to touching to not touching the Lord's anointed <laughs> is honor. It like, is. So if we're it, we're either harming what the Lord is doing mm -hmm. or we're honoring what the Lord is doing. That's it right there. And that's a really simple way. Uh, for us to perform a little litmus test in our life. Am I harming or what the Lord is trying to do, or am I honoring? Mm, mm. And that's excellent. I mean, when, you know, one, of the, one of the points coming out of the gate on Sunday was that 
honor changes culture. Mm -hmm. So we, we tend to think that by taking a step forward and make something happen, making something happen, this is really challenging, particularly Luke, when God gives you a vision. Yes. We have to remember that David has already been anointed. Samuel, the spirit of God has already departed from Saul. Samuel has already come and anointed David. So David is walking around with the knowledge that he's already defeated Goliath. He's walking around with the knowledge that he's the Lord's anointed too. Right. And now that God is moving him into this position, and yet David had such a heart to walk with the Lord mm -hmm. so closely that he wouldn't even, even when he did cut that robe well, off. And it, Saul wanted to kill David. He tried <laughs> to kill David multiple times. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, David had to run away. I know. And he has his friends with him who I'm sure they had lots of conversations yeah. about Saul and how Saul was coming after mm -hmm. him. And then he has these opportunities where he can, where it's flipped. Yeah. David has the opportunity. Yeah. Day, and, 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 you know, his friends several times, and we said, and again, a great point from Pastor Zach's message on Sunday, whereas at the beginning, his friends, his mighty men said, now's the time. The Lord has delivered your enemy and your adversary into your hands. Strike now. Right. This is your moment. This is your this moment. Is your moment. To the nth degree where David's men actually rend their clothes as well when they hear about Saul. Right. That, that's the thing, that when we lead well, mm -hmm. we lead from a place of honoring the Lord's anointing, right. so that we won't even let not only our heart go to the place of harming, like you said, mm -hmm. but those whom we're leading, they're not going to want to harm either. Right, because I'm sure his men, after he you know, leaves the cave, I'm sure there were some that were like, you know, you, you really should have killed him. Mm -hmm. But then David launches into explaining why he, why he didn't. Um, I mean that those conversations are not recorded in scripture. Correct. But you but it's evidenced by the fact that now his men are they stand in agreement with him yeah. at the time of Saul's death. It's so powerful. That's ultimately there's so much in this message, and that's ultimately what I keep looking at is that if we're leading well, you're going to see that in our leadership. Not right. just that we're an excellent leader, but that those who are watching us have the same conviction that we have, mm -hmm. that they wouldn't even stretch out their hand and right. that they wouldn't even, and not only that, they're moved to grief right. when the Lord's anointed has come right. down. Right, right. And, and so two points that I'm getting from this is yeah. number one, to step out in honor can often mean that you might step out alone initially. Yep. But then the second That's step, good. The, good. Se the second piece is that honor has to be taught. Mm. So when you step out, you stand out, and then from there, when people ask questions, then we can, we can teach on that. And that's how culture changes. That's how we change as a body. Well, this is interesting that you say taught because it's this whole principle of some is caught and some is taught. Mm. And I think that where we are teaching directly, we're also indirectly teaching Well, you know, I'm going to emphasize teaching. Yeah, I know. So, so am I. We two <laughs> teachers are sitting yes. here. It must be taught. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where you and I go. But so much, and I have this dialogue with teachers sometimes, is like, oh, I'm not really a teacher. And I, and I say to them, yes, you are, because you're modeling. Mm -hmm. That's being caught. Right. So David, you know, his, not only David's word in the silence and the conversations in the, in the cave of Adullam, but also the way that he is posturing himself and positioning himself, saying, even now, Saul, I would come and I would return to you. You know, it's ha that heart posture where all of his men are hearing, he's not directly trying to teach the men, this is how we honor. He is literally living out the heart conviction that God gave him. It's being caught right. by the men right. around him. And this is one of the phenomenal points, points that I think about when we understand that God is the one who places those in authority. It's hard to right. reconcile some right. of these passages, right, in the New Testament, that the Lord is the one who has established authority. Mm -hmm. And he establishes authorities um, for various reasons. And I think one of the things that we have to understand is that if somebody is in power, and Paul writes a lot about this, that, right. hey, you know, they're not in power um, to, to impose this on you. They're actually there for the rebellious. Right. And so you can honor right. the Lord. By submitting to that authority. Right. And that's, and that's an, another piece as I, was, as I was meditating on the message is, you know, because we, we criticize or, or we speak out against 
bad bad leadership, bad leadership. Or, or, or bad actions and, yeah. and the actions very often can be bad yeah and and our and what we say is true yeah but what the lord is saying is uh what i what i what i believe like we're drawing from this is there are institutions that the lord created mm-hmm. so by virtue of being in a certain position yeah there is an honor yes. that that person is due it's due. like a baseline honor just like um you know Honor your father there you and go. mother. That's what I was thinking. So we all have imperfect parents. That's right. Everybody does. Yep. Um, some more imperfect than others, some very harmful who have actually abused their their own children. Yet the Lord doesn't use that as a qualifier to not honoring your parents. That's right. So there is an honor because of the role. And it's the only commandment with a promise. That's right. It actually carries long life. Yeah. This is an excellent point because I like that you're breathing it out there. And I think that that for me has been one of the ways I've been able to reconcile some of these harder passages from Paul and even writings in Hebrews that we are to submit to every earthly institution and governance. And and the challenge is there that what about when the government is off and when it's wrong, but it is that institution of authority that God has established. And we understand that there is a level of honor. Yes, It doesn't mean, and this is what I like that Pastor Zach said, Touch not the Lord's anointed, quote unquote, from the scripture, mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you don't raise a question or challenge or challenge when the leader is doing something that is off. Right. And right. this has been really misunderstood. We don't seem to we honestly go ahead, go ahead. And the thing but well the thing is, <laughs> is like when even when we do that, we aren't even the ones challenging mm. because we will know something is off by the scripture. Yeah. So then we say According to the scripture, you are off. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, I think it's, uh, was it Michael the archangel? Like he says to Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah, when the he, Lord rebuke you. Right. So it's even like that kind of attitude where it's it's not me challenging you. That's I'm right. calling you back to the scripture. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And I think if we can practice that, I, I was going to say, I don't think we have a difficult time in our government. We In government, if we just like move out of the church mm-hmm. for a second. Yeah. We seem to understand this pretty well, and we, we actually take it to the nth degree that when some type of ruler in our government system does or says something that is contrary to even our own personal belief, right. we want to speak up on it. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, when we come into the church, um, sometimes we either practice that and we do it well, and we, we're using the scripture as the litmus test, or, or right. sometimes we don't say anything at all because we've been taught, touch right. not the Lord's anointed. Right. And I don't know if you grew up with that, but we were literally taught that there really wasn't even a way to use. Oh, wow. Yeah, like you don't, you don't bring that challenge because right. that is the man of God. Gotcha. And, and I don't want to diminish that role no, that, that God puts over mm-hmm. a pastor or an apostle. But it's so important to make sure that we understand that we're all subject to the word of God. Right. Like any one of us can be right. off at any moment. And that measuring rod is the word of God and his Holy Spirit. right. right. And so I think it's really important that we come back mm-hmm. to that. Um, and again, this idea, what are we looking at? What, what God is looking for is he's looking for that place of honor because honor is so lost in our culture right, right now. Right. And it's got to begin here with God's house. Judgment right. begins first right. here. So on a practical level, yes. how, do you, how would you say that this looks when we're, when we're dealing with two believers in the church? Mm-hmm. So you're dealing with two believers in the church, and what's the question? So like, the question would be, yeah. Um, there's a there's a disagreement, there's a dispute, mm-hmm. or someone has har- one one believer has harmed another believer. How how are we going to work through that? Okay, how do we honor? So you're so you're not even saying we're going to the point of like there's a level offense. of leadership. Yeah, no, but you're yeah. you're not even saying no, not okay, even a this level because okay. I think this I think this goes all the way down. It goes all the way because down because in the in the New Testament we are all anointed. Correct. Right. So we can go all the way down. Okay. So you're saying start at baseline. Yeah, let's you start have baseline. Two believers yeah. in the church. Because what does the enemy usually do? He usually gets mm-hmm. one of them offended. Yep. And then they leave the church, right? Mm-hmm. So you're saying, how do we take two believers? Yes. Okay. I think one of the important factors here is Paul gives a lot of this in his writings. In Philippians 2, he says that you need to look out not only for your own interests, but for the interests of others. Mm. And you need to esteem others better than yourself. Yeah. Furthermore, Colossians, you need to make allowance for each other's faults. Mm. So when I marry all those scriptures together, I think about the writings of Paul, who's giving us a breath of revelation yes. from the gospel. He's breathing out what Jesus actually did yeah. um, in the gospel that we're presented with. Paul is telling us that if we understand that we're going to take that low place, we're not going to be run over by each other, but there actually is a way to healthily confront 
a brother or a sister who has offended you, but you really shouldn't do so yet until you've checked your own heart. Mm. Are you are you trying to railroad them and say, you're wrong and this is the way it is? Right. Or are you coming from a posture of humility that says, hey, I actually esteem you right. as my brother or my yeah. sister, yeah. and I wanted to point this out. Yeah. I think posture is everything, Luke. Yeah. I, 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 you're making me think of... Um when I came into your your powers in the gospel class last night to just yeah. check it out, yeah. when you talked about forgiveness, yeah. I think I think you should share that, the, the two parts of forgiveness. Okay. Yeah, so I would say the first part of the forgiveness is what we're often taught, that you have to forgive, and so you have to release. So we get people to the place where they're able to release this offense. But I would say that the second side of the equation of forgiveness is asking the Lord mm. to reveal to me how he sees that person. Right. I tend to look at the offender Mm -hmm. only through the offense. Right. And God sees the offender greater, through a greater scope and spectrum than that offense. And and to me, once I have, through the mind of Christ, Mm. once I have that picture of how God sees that person, it's a lot easier to honor that. It is. Because my picture is distorted. Yes. And it makes me come out on top. Yes. It, it does. And this is excellent. I actually love, whereas Pastor Zach was bringing us to, quote, touch not the Lord's anointed from Second Samuel 1, um, you're bringing us right down to baseline because this brings us back into a greenhouse environment. <laughs> We're all going to be sitting right. around. Right. And how are we going to deal with these things that come up with one another? And if we take the principle of, wait a minute, this is my anointed brother, my anointed sister, this is the anointed mm. children in the house, yes. then I need to learn to work with each other, work with them in a way that is really honoring to God. And I, I love that you're bringing it right back, right down to this baseline. If we understand, again, like I said, Paul says in Philippians 2, that we are to esteem others better than right. ourselves. Right. We do end up looking at ourselves as that top person and those who have offended us, well, they're really the one yeah. you know, that needs to suffer because mm-hmm. they've done me at wrong. Least I do that. You know, we that's, all that's do my it, natural Luke. tendency. Yeah, we all do it. We all do it. And so I think this is great. I think one of the things I think you're, you're bringing out here that's really awesome is if we can practice it at a level that's baseline right. with peers, it's going to be a lot easier when it comes to that authority. Right. Absolutely. And if you think about it, the lower we go when we're doing with our peers, there's not as much insulation. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at it from an organizational structure, like a, a church leadership, yeah. there's a lot of insulation between us and leadership. There's a lot of layers to That's go true. through. That's true. Um, which creates more which actually creates more accountability. Yeah. Um, and and it, there's a process that we there's like a chain that we can go up. But in that everyday level, that's where that's where a lot of this happens. Yeah. You know, this is what this is. And this is where as we become more like Christ every in the everyday, Mm -hmm. then we'll start to um, display him and his heart and honor people in in every way. Yeah. We no matter how high up the chain we have to go. Well, that's it. Again, I, I have to say on the mic and I'll tell you when we get off of it. I really appreciate that you brought it baseline because, um, you know, we if we can settle on this here that. We don't need to defend ourselves right. at the lowest level. Mm-hmm. That's like a big practice for all of us. We yeah. all feel the need when somebody wrongs us or has a wrong opinion of us. Right. We sometimes feel the need to defend ourselves. And David understood that it was the Lord who anointed him. Yeah. It was therefore the Lord who was going to defend and him. And that's, that's something I really want to bring out. Okay. Um, David didn't even seek this anointing. Yes. So Samuel was sent to David's father's house Mm -hmm. to anoint one of his sons. And Mm -hmm. they bring out all the sons, but they don't bring out David. (laughs) And then the Lord says, it's none of these guys. It, and so he has to ask, Samuel has to ask, like, do you have anybody anybody else, any yeah. other sons? Like, yeah. where are you hiding them? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's the one way out in the field. <laughs> so the Lord knows your address. Yeah. The Lord knows where you are. Yes. And so David knew this firsthand. And what, did da- what was David doing out there? He was caring for yes. sheep. He was doing his duty. And he was cultivating the presence of the Lord. It's good. You know, he knew the heart of the Father. He's writing songs. Yeah. He's writing, he, we have a whole book of Psalms yep. because of him. Yep. So, th- and that's where this all starts. Yeah. I am changed, not even by my own willpower nope. or by someone else's nope. teaching, or it's, it's by the presence of the Lord. That's it. That's it. And in that presence is where we discover 
intimacy. Mm -hmm. And so when I have intimacy with the Father, I don't feel the need to defend myself. And this was an excellent principle that I think David may maybe, you know, being a Hebrew and understanding some of the earlier writings, that this is something we see displayed with Moses, that it was God who defended Moses. And I tend to think about that for myself. Um, One of the practices we have to look at is like, okay, Lord, I'm going to present my case if I need Mm. to, but you're going to be my defense. I don't need to stand up and make this defense because ultimately if, if I can move very easily and quickly, I can move beyond defending myself to dishonoring that person, yes. which is exactly what Pastor Zach was talking about on right. Sunday. And it, and you even dis we dishonor ourselves when there we you act go. in dishonor because we all nobody actually ever feels good. No, you might have that momentary like, Ugh, yeah, all right, I got you, yeah. But then after that, because it is sin, we reap those results of sin. We have those effects. Well, I just want to say this. This this was the point, and I know you got something there, but I want to say this. This is the point that Pastor Zach made. To defeat the Lord's anointing on someone else is to defeat it in your own life. Yes. So you we we very easily play into the hand of the enemy, thinking that by tearing that person down, we're going to somehow feel the justification, the satisfaction, but it's empty, especially when that's your brother or sister in Christ. Right. It's not gonna lead to that result, that end result. Right. Right. Um, I, I love how uh, Peter puts it in First Peter 5, because I think it, it really fleshes out how this looks in the church okay. from leadership and then those who are under leadership. Uh, so starting in verse one, he says, and now a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, Mm. you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Mm. And you know what you're you're saying right there? I was writing it down while you were still reading, but I got to say this. You know what the proverb says? Before honor is humility. Mm. And so one of the things is that we're going to be recipients of whatever we've modeled. Really simply, whatever we sow, we're going to reap. And so if we have modeled humility in submitting to a governing authority, then when God exalts us to a place of governing authority, we're going to be receiving humility and servant uh, submission from others. You know Mm. what I'm saying? In a healthy way. If we're modeling that, that's going to be what we receive. Right. Which is what I believe that passage is Mm. really communicating. That's Amen. awesome. Amen. So do you have any, I think we've touched a lot of great things here. I know it was a phenomenal message. Yeah. I'm really excited how it's it's kind of in preparation of Greenhouse. Any closing remarks or final thoughts? No, I just think we just have to pray diligently yeah. every day Okay. Uh, that the Lord will show us um, how can we do better with honoring those in our life. Yep. And again, I think it's really important that we remember that as believers, as those washed by the blood, we are no longer under condemnation. Correct. So we we don't have to because I know some of those the stories. That's where, good. That's you good. You know, getting you know the because the the soul, the Amalekite he gets he gets struck dead. Yeah. You know for for um for killing Saul. Um, as believers, we are not under condemnation. Right. We have the righteousness of Christ imputed to us, put on us. Correct. Um, but. We still have to grow in sanctification. And that's what this falls under to yeah. me is we're going to grow in sanctification, growing together. Um, and then we get to reap those benefits because these are spiritual principles. That's good. Honor is a spiritual principle. Authority is a spiritual principle. And when we operate correctly the way God intentionally designed, and that's really what this is, honoring the Lord's design, then we reap the benefits and, and we grow together. That's really good, Luke. I feel like what you're saying is kind of bringing me back to uh, when Paul is writing again in Philippians and saying, work out your salvation through fear and trembling. Mm. This might be a situation where you realize like, whoa, I've missed the mark Mm -hmm. and I've really torn down some leaders over my life. 
Well, it's not done for you. Right. There's still breath in your lungs, right? Mm -hmm. So taking that place to say, okay, I'm not going to be condemned, like right. Romans 8 because says. Because Satan will, will cause you to think that, yeah, you're never going to change. You can't undo what happened. Right. But to understand, like, okay, if that, if that sense of, like, conviction has come, this is where I would say, again, this is where you're going to work out that salvation and say, okay, Lord, I've really missed the mark, and now I understand this was wrong. So I want to move forward in a place of honor. And I believe that sometimes, um, you know, I will say this, a practical thing. When I have had this happen in areas of my life, what I've loved is at the right time, and I can't stress that enough, at the right time, the Lord brought certain parties back into my life. Right. He opened the door. He brought them in in a time where there could be restoration and reconciliation, and there could be forgiveness on both sides and say, hey, we missed the mark here. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry for how I dishonored you. And, you know, hey, maybe I'm sorry for how I misled you. You know, and that's all. Th this is what I love. Yes. Is that it's not fatal. It doesn't have to be fatal. No. We're, we're new kingdom, new, new covenant people. It doesn't have to be fatal as long as the parties are willing. And I think mm -hmm. it starts with some prayer. It starts yes. with, like you said, earnestly asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what do I do with the fact that I may have been very dishonorable in these areas towards these leaders or whatever? How do I move forward in restoration with right. that? That's and awesome. that's why we, we have greenhouses. That's why we have pastors yep. that walk with us and yeah. mentor us. That's so good, man. That's awesome. Okay, well, listen, it has been a great show today. We definitely need to pray before we go because we need the Lord to help us all. Mm. Um, but uh, I'm going to ask you to just lead us in prayer, brother. Sure. Father, thank you for your presence in our life. Um, Father, may we never take that for granted, but mm. may we every day um, find ourselves in your presence, that we would enter into um, the, your presence in our life and live from that place, that place where we know who you are and we see ourselves the way you see us. Yes, um, and we don't try to find ourselves in our positions in the world or our relationships with others, but that our satisfaction comes from knowing that uh, we have been bought by you. Yeah. Um, and it's not because of anything that we did, but it's all because of Jesus's death on the cross. And from that place of gratitude that we just live out a, a selfless life, honoring each other and pointing each other back uh, to Jesus. And so I just pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. As always, I'm Kurt. And I'm Luke. And that's The Breakdown. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>